Hi guys and welcome to Modded Minecraft. I'm joking, not entirely, because we'll be modding the game today quite a bit, but let's get straight to the point. There has been a few significant changes made in 1.9 version of the game to the spawning mechanics that definitely should change expectations of many kinds of mob farms and if those changes stay, may change a general approach to a few staples of Minecraft mob farming. As per usual, one of the changes is a bug and the other a feature. A feature is when we can observe deliberate changes in the code proving that this change was intended. And a bug is when we can observe in the code deliberate pieces trying to do something else but the game in fact acts the opposite. Let's start with the new feature. Bug spawning has been nerfed. In general, every game tick the game checks if there are extra slots available for certain mobs to spawn, and if so, goes through all the places called chunks around all the players and attempts to place a few new mobs in the world to fill the mob caps. In each of the chunks it finds a random location to start the spawning algorithm and if certain conditions are met, like the initial spawning point is not occupied by a full and opaque block, it can commence the spawning procedure. In it, it tries to spawn up to three packs of mobs of possibly different types around the initial spawn location. For every pack, it selects a starting point up to five blocks away in X and Z directions from the initial spawning point and chooses a type of a mob that is appropriate to that particular location. So for instance, if it travels to here, it can spawn spiders, zombies, skeletons, creepers, slimes, endermen and witches. So let's say it chooses zombies. Now guys, please collaborate with me, I'm demoing stuff to the peeps and I don't want anybody to kill each other or blow up something, okay? Thanks. The game checks if a zombie can spawn here, fits nicely, light is good, etc. If everything is cool, and let's assume it's night for a moment, it spawns a mob and searches for another location in the 5x5 vicinity to spawn another. Tries again, it may fail because mobs cannot spawn me there, and then again, up to 4 mobs. Then it goes back to the starting point and starts the second pack, with possibly a different type of a mob for up to 3 different such groups in total. Now, if at any point it reaches 4 creatures total spawned in a cycle, it finishes up spawning for this chunk and continues in the next one. It used to be like that in 1.8, 3 packs of max 4 creatures each, but also 4 mobs max in total. So as you might quickly calculate, 12 attempts to spawn up to 4 creatures. In 1.9 though, the size of the pack that the game attempts to spawn is not fixed to 4, but is a random number from 1 to 4. So it may decide to spawn first only two zombies, followed by just one creeper, which may always fail. What? And maybe one Enderman? Essentially for every pack drawing a random number of attempts from 1 to 4. So in general it uses on average 7.5 attempts to spawn up to 4 mobs. In many situations like this one where lots of places around the spawn point are good for spawning, it is probably going to find all four, but in more challenging terrain, it is quite likely that the 7.5 attempts may not be sufficient to reach four successful spawns. Let's check what happens if we simulate the spawning algorithm in a perfectly flat area with all spaces available for spawning, for both 1.8 and 1.9 algorithms. Since the algorithm cannot fail in any of these locations, the 7.5 attempts are sufficient to spawn the maximum of 4 mobs, and we can notice a decline in spawn rates of only 3%, due to an extremely slim chance of spawning 3 packs of only 1 mob each. Let's check a different scenario. Long stripes of spawnable locations divided by a few blocks of non-spawnable space. Typical deal in all the fast reaction piston floor retracting mob farms. Since most locations are not available for spawning, the game has to hunt a bit for a suitable spot. The drop in spawn rates in such farms are 30% comparing to 1.8. So in general, smaller or bigger drops in yield should be observed in all farms based on natural spawning. To name a few, general hostile mob farms, enderman farms, garden farms, peaceful mob farms, slime farms, squid farms, zombie pigment farms, wither skull farms, cat farms, bat farms and witch farms. The last one is a prime example because due to pretty tight restrictions with regards to the spawning area and the usefulness of the drop generated by these farms, they were good benchmarks of what could be achieved. But before we look deeper into which farms, let's talk about the other change, the buggy one. 
Previously, in 1.8, mobs could only spawn in spaces not occupied by other entities, so it was imperative to remove freshly spawned mobs from the farm area as soon as possible to allow other mobs to spawn in the same location. It used to be the case. In 1.9, the only entity that can prevent mobs from spawning is a boat, and all mobs can actually spawn in the same space occupied by another mob. This doesn't seem like an intended change because the source code seems still to tell otherwise, but as a result, it is now possible to make 100% efficient witch farms, for example. It is when all the spawning spaces are available all the time for spawning. The only task is to remove the mobs from the farm area before they would despawn or fill the mob cap. And you cannot do it by pushing them with blocks or removing the floor underneath them because this would result in temporary blockage of spawning space, thus reducing the efficiency. To remove witches, you would need to use entities. I have totally, unintentionally, came up with such 100% efficient design a while ago using arrows from skeletons to shoot off witches down the spawning platform. Oh, you don't see stuff? Let me turn on the lights so you can see better. I noticed that the farm performs better than it was supposed to, but I didn't know why back then. Now with the ability to nullify the skeleton arrows by dropping them on forever falling sand entities that want to fall down on the fence, but are at the same time repelled by its engorged collision box, and therefore never reaching the surface of it, a trick found previously by Ilmango, we can now have a server-friendly, pure entities version of the farm. Oh, and did you say that handling skeletons in survival is not easy? Just drink an invisibility potion and as long as you keep the distance of at least two blocks, they won't even notice you. So the premise for a perfect witch farm is very simple. Leave them spawning blocks alone and find an original way to push them witches off the platforms. This may possibly lead to some very interesting designs. Obviously until Moyang realizes about the bug and fixes it, but this would mean that 100% efficient witch farm designs are not longer possible. With the new conditions, new benchmarks for efficient witch farms designs are required because old numbers do not hold true. To estimate them accurately, I had to mod the game to allow me to simulate Minecraft spawning algorithm within the actual Minecraft game. So here we have it, a modded Minecraft experience with all the aspects of the game run as normal, 20 ticks per second, except for mob spawning. I disabled spawning of passive ambient and water mobs entirely to save on some CPU and crank up hostile mob spawning to 2000 ticks per second, allowing to simulate one hour of mob spawning in 36 seconds. All the area around the witch hut is protected from spawning and three platforms of the witch hut were replaced with endstone to be able to track mobs that are witches and spawn on top of the endstone as relevant spawns for the witch farm area. The mobs that spawned were then removed at the end of each spawning cycle and then entire cycle was repeated again, 100 times in each game tick. This allowed me to obtain an equivalent of 30 days of AFKing in little over 7 hours. I then collected results of potential drops from those witches that spawned within these individual 1 hour sessions and aggregated them into a histogram indicating what yield can be expected after AFKing for an hour at a witch hut. Let's first take a look at 1.8.8 version of the game. We can see that the possible droppings vary greatly, but large number of sessions allowed me to estimate that the average yield of an ideal witch farm would be 7575 plus minus 10 drops per hour. Let's now move to 1.0 snapshots, when mobs started to be allowed to spawn in each other. The maximum theoretical yield of a farm was raised to 7830 plus minus 10 drops per hour. Many 1.9 compatible witch farms were developed back then with great yield results reported, but it was merely due to the new theoretical maximum of witch farm performance. With the advent of 1.9 and the spawning nerf, I dove down into the code and identified the source of the drop performance in modified pack spawning algorithm. The new benchmark for an optimal farm with this setting I measured at 6220 plus minus 10 drops per hour. However, these days, it is still possible to make a 100% efficient witch farm design because of the no-entity collision bug. So what would happen if this bug was fixed? I actually decided to go ahead and fix it myself, just to estimate how much we could get from a witch farm if this bug was not in the game. I got the result, after another 30 days of AFK, of 6070 plus minus 10 drops per hour. 
However, this would also mean that the 100% efficient survival designs are no longer possible. At the end, I would like to point you to the variability and the obtained results of each one hour long sessions, which shows that you can be easily up to 400 drops away from the actual performance of your farm. To make sure you are within 100 drops away from the actual result, you need to report the results of a 16 hour AFK session, or better, 16 sessions, one hour each. That's all that I have got for you today. If you liked it, please leave a like and leave me a comment down below, especially if there is something I could improve in the future. See you in the next one. Bye bye.